The definition of the class named Prob 05 My Class B is shown in its entirety on the right of your screen. So here's another question. Does the class named Prob 05 My Class B shown on the right of your screen extend another class? If not, why not? If so, what class does it extend? The class shown on the right of your screen does not extend the class name Prob05. In fact, it doesn't explicitly extend any other class. This means that it extends the class named Object by default. Every class is a subclass of the class named Object and if it doesn't explicitly extend some other class, it will extend the class named Object by default. The constructor for this class simply displays my, my last name when the object of the class is instantiated. This produces part of the output text that I explained in the specifications for the problem. So here's a question. What is the purpose of the code that is shown in red on the right of your screen? The answer to this question is somewhat more complicated than the answers to many of the questions that I ask in the classroom. The method named get data from OBJ is highlighted on the right hand side of your screen. As we know from the code on the bottom right of your screen, the method named get data from OBJ shown on the upper right of your screen receives a reference to an object of type prob05 my class A however the reference is not received as the true type of the object Instead, that reference is received as type object, which is the ultimate superclass of the class named Prob05 My Class A. The objective of the method named Get Data from Object on the upper right of your screen is to call the method named Get Data on the incoming reference. However, the object class doesn't know anything about a method named getData because the object class neither defines nor inherits a method named getData. Instead, the getData method is defined in the class named prob05 my class A, which is the true type of the object. Therefore, in order to use the incoming reference to call that method, it is necessary to convert the type of the reference back to its true type. This is done by using a cast operator in front of that reference and this must be done before that reference can be used to call the method name get data. The cast operator is shown in red on the right of your screen. So the highlighted code on the right of your screen uses a 
cast operator to cast the incoming reference to type prob05 my class A. It then uses that reference with the dot operator to call the method named get data that belongs to the object whose reference is received as an incoming parameter. This call to the get data method returns a copy of the value that was passed as a constructor parameter when the object was instantiated way back in listing 2. Recall that this value was the original random number value that was obtained in listing 1. That is the value that is returned from the call to the method name getData from OBJ on the bottom right of your screen. This value is passed to the print line method, which causes the random value to be displayed on the command line output. We see the result of passing that value to the print line method on the right side of your screen. Now picking up where we left off in the main method on the upper right of your screen, the code in the bottom right of your screen shows the remaining code in the main method. The final statement in the main method on the middle right of your screen causes the original random number value to be displayed. This produces the second numeric value shown as the last line of output text on the bottom right of your screen. The main method terminates on the middle right of your screen which causes the program to terminate. In summary, in this lecture, you have learned about the following object-oriented program programming concepts, among others. Multiple levels of indirection, a one-element array of type object, storing a reference to an object in an array element of type object, an anonymous object, passing a reference to a subclass object as type object, casting an incoming object reference to make it possible to access a method. That concludes lecture number five titled Indirection, Array Objects, and Casting. You can learn more about these topics by visiting my website at www.dickbaldwin.com.